Well, it's time to get double excited for the next generation as British superstars Fury and AJ find themselves in the last hurdle of their careers. The vinegar stroke, if you will, then who has the potential to take over their realm? Well, one name is making the waves and the noise to do exactly that. And it's this man, Fabio Wardley, the heavyweight rising star, current British champion and an absolute knockout machine. But who is he really? Where the ruddy hell did he come from? And how far can he go? Well, our How's about we have a little look then? Let's get stuck in, here we go. So after a sensational dismantling of David Adelaide, it's time to really take notice of Big Fabio. It was another belter, weren't it? He's made a habit of being in very entertaining fights and a habit of getting the job done in style. Plus he must have hit David pretty hard because after the fight was over, he started fighting the fucking referee. He said, fuck off, ref, I'm right as rain, bruv. Don't take the biscuit, bosh, liver shot. But yeah, nah, sorry, David. It was a fair enough stoppage, bruv. Anyway, so where has Big Fabio come from, eh? Well, let's rewind a little bit to his humble beginning, shall we? Because it's a ruddy interesting story. God, they're all right, aren't they? Blimey, yes, please. Now then, he was born in Ipswich on December the 18th, 1994. He weren't a big fan of school, but he had his sights set on being an entrepreneur. So upon leaving, he got straight into a sales role, making his way through into the recruitment world. Yes, searching the old job boards, cold calling the database. Hello, Brian, I got a blinding warehouse operative role for you down in Croydon, bruv. Four pound an hour, 200 hours a week, start Monday bring your heart out, you'll be fucking running the place in a decade, bosh. And I'll tell you what, he was a double tasty little salesman actually, earning himself around 50k a year by the time he was 19. Now his true love was football from a young age, but then in those late teen years, ankle injury stopped him from playing, so he had to call it a day. He needed something to fill the void of that competitive edge he had with football, so he called up an old friend, boxing trainer Rob Hodgins. Now Rob at this time had been a decent little boxing trainer at the local gym for many years, and of course is still fabulous trainer to this very day. In Wardley's school years, Rob was a part of the Positive Futures program that helped wayward kids get on the straight and narrow through sports, particularly boxing. Rob always asked Fabio to take part, but he said, nah, bollocks. But then when his football career was over, he gave Rob a call and was invited down to do some training. And this is where it all began. The 20-year-old recruitment consultant walked in the gym, hit some pads and instantly fell in love with the game. So much so that on the same day, he asked to spar the biggest person in the gym who happened to be an ex-ABA champion. Rob was reluctant, but Fabio insisted. So the young Wardley got in the ring having barely an hour ago laced up gloves for the first time to spar an experienced amateur champion. And would you believe it? He went and absolutely got fucking walloped. Yeah, boxing's not really a sport you can pick up in an hour. He went down around six times. He got thrown about, was taking bare body shots and ting, but he kept getting up and he kept toughing it out. A trait that he is held for today. Day. So he was hooked from this moment on and took it very seriously, training with Rob as often as possible, pushing his body to the limit until he eventually was getting the better of his sparring partners. He knew this was what he wanted to pursue, so he even quit his recruitment job to work part-time at the gym instead. And as the word spread of how useful he was to spar with, he started to get calls from the big boys like Sam Sexton, Derek Chisora, as well as Dillian White, who he built a very good friendship with. Now Fabio knew the sparring would help him catch up the seasoned amateurs, so he he dedicated a huge amount of time to it, and after a wealth of sparring experience but only four white collar fights, all of which he won, he decided to give the pro game a bash, winning his first bout on points, then following up with three solid knockouts on the small hall shows. However, his management at the time were as he described fucking useless, cancelling fights, not pulling their weight and he was getting frustrated. Then upon telling Dillian his frustrations, the body snatcher out of the blue offered Fabio to sign with himself, attempting offer that would see Fabio competing on glamorous matchroom shows to a huge audience. Back in 2018 when Eddie and Sky had the British scene all sewn up. It was an absolute no-brainer, so he wormed his way out of his current contract and put pen to paper. His first introduction to the mainstream being on the White Chisora 2 card, of which he made a statement against Phil Williams. Unsettled Wardley, it's not working, there was a good uppercut, then he oh, goes to the uppercut cut. again and under a constant barrage, down he goes and Kieran McCann just waves the bow. Yes, so he couldn't have got off to a better start with Dilly in a matchroom, but having only entered the gym four years earlier, he must have been thinking, how the fucking hell did I end up here? I was stitching up Brian with that warehouse job only a couple of years ago. But yes, the bond between Fabio and Rob was strong and his superb development was unveiled with a constant flurry of knockouts, even as the level of his opposition increased, sparking out the likes of Simon Valilli in the matchroom garden for his first accolade, the English title, and destroying Richard Larty behind 
behind closed doors. Yeah, remember that fight? He took about three and a half minutes to get to the ring, didn't he? Bloody hell, he must have thought he was on fucking Strictly. And yes, well, it was a nice combination by Fabio, but come on, he went down like a box of plums there, so either Richard had a bet on himself in round two, or he just got hit by a bloody sniper. Or maybe he was just completely knackered after spending four hours walking to the fucking ring. I don't know, but yeah, slowed down, we see the shot catch the glove, it didn't really catch the head, did it? So nice acting, Dicky boy, but don't be doing that sort of bollocks anymore, bruv. You're on TV, you big fruit, you're never gonna get away with it, ruddy hell. Anyway, then it was time for his first real test against the experienced Molina, who, okay, he's never exactly been Mike Tyson, but he did fight for world titles and Fabio showed his toughness, taking a few perlers from the American, then fighting fire with fire to get yet another big knockout. Again, a bit of a soft knockout, he's got a habit of that old Molina, but still, Fabio was making noise, and after another good display against the very game Nick Webb, two second round knockouts followed before it was time for the big one, the prestigious British title on the line against Tyson Fury's cousin, the well-seasoned Nathan Gorman, who unlike Fabio had been fighting since his childhood. It was three rounds of absolute carnage as the Suffolk lad took more punishment than he would have liked. But yet again, as he had shown in the Webb and Molina fight, when he is under the cosh, it lights a fire in him and he put Gorman down twice in round two, finishing him off in the third round. Absolute scenes. He was now British champion, an incredible achievement for such a late developer in the sport. So double fair play. Then with a chief support to AJ against Coffee, he continued his knockout streak before the grudge match that caught everybody's attention against David Adelaide, a coming together of two potential stars of the future along with a financially life-changing amount of money involved as well. And as we know, Fabio showed he really is the next gen. He was patient and poised and simply looked levels above the Londoner, ending it with a sensational knockdown and destruction of Adelaide in the seventh round. Yes. So then old Fabio has come a very long way with longtime friend and trainer Rob, and he has now made himself a one to watch nearing the top of the heavyweight division. But what does the future hold? What could be next? And how far can he go? Now, due to his late entry to boxing, he's probably not going to be served to the world level just yet. But with his top 10 IBF and WBA rankings, he is coming into the sights of the boys below that. Maybe say the Caballels, the Tacams, the Franklins, the Charles Martins. That's a tasty little fight, actually. It's a bit soon for a Parker or a Dubois or a Joyce, but with three or four more wins, these fights will probably be in reach. But what about one name that has been on the radar for for a while then. What about Fraser Clark? Well, I do like Fraser, but with all the faffing about him and Ben Shalom have done, it's now a bit of a backward step for Fabio. It's still a big domestic fight, don't get me wrong, but does it really propel him on any further? I don't know. And boxers seem to be double scared of putting their prodigies in with anyone that poses a threat, so I'm not convinced they'd ever make the fight anyway. Fraser does want it, but there's clearly some issues in the background. But yes, Fabio will certainly be knocking on the door of the world scene very soon. However, it's no secret that he's had a few sticky moments with what you would consider lower level fighters. So as much as this Jeopardy makes for exciting fights, it is something that he definitely cannot take too much of at the top level. Because it's one thing taking a bang from Molina or Gorman and recovering, but it's another taking a bang from Dubois or Parker and recovering. If he fights how he's been fighting, one day it may not end too well. Yes, so it's interesting times for young Wardley. He clearly does have the potential to one day become a pay-per-view star, so double fair play to him and Rob for that. But expect to see one or two tick-over fights next after the big Adelaide win, but then a big test should be coming straight after. He has the power, he has the heart, but with that limited background, does he have the ability at the top of the game? We shall see. Check out the podcast where us melts will be talking all about this and other hot sexy topics bubbling up in the boxing world. Toodle pit for now, bosh.